Subject verb agreement. In order for a sentence to be a sentence and for a clause to be a clause, the first verb in the sentence and clause must agree in number with the subject. By agree, we mean that the number of the verb must match the number of the subject. For example, a singular subject must be paired with the corresponding singular form of the verb, and a plural subject must be paired with the corresponding plural form of the verb, as in the following, subjects in bold, verbs in italics. Singular. That apple looks like a gala. Plural. Those apples look like galas. The sections in this chapter deal with the three main situations in which writers are most likely to make subject verb agreement errors. One, agreement with lost subjects. This section shows you how to monitor for subject verb agreement when the subject phrase is so long or complicated that the actual subject can get lost and the verb mistakenly agrees with the word that is not the actual subject. For example, the cost of all the repairs we needed to make were more than we could afford. In this example, the writer has lost track of the subject and has made the verb were agree with the plural noun repairs. The actual subject is the singular noun cost. The cost of all the repairs we needed to make was more than we could afford. Two, the mysterious case of there is and there was. A surprising number of subject verb errors involve sentences that begin there is or there was. Part of the problem is that in sentences of this type, the subject actually follows the verb. For example, there's usually some leftovers in the freezer. The verb is singular, but the actual subject is plural. So the verb also needs to be in the plural form. There are usually some leftovers in the freezer. Three, agreement with compound subjects. A compound subject is a subject with two noun phrases joined by a coordinating conjunction. This section deals with the number of subject verb agreement problems posed by compound subjects. The most common problem is a failure to use a plural verb when the compound subjects are joined with and, for example. Good planning and careful execution is necessary for success. The verb is singular, but a compound subject joined by and requires a plural verb. Good planning and careful execution are necessary for success. Agreement with lost subjects. The most common cause of subject verb agreement error is when the writer has lost track of what the subject actually is and has made the verb agree with the wrong thing. To a great extent, the causes of this type of error are the length and complexity of the subject, noun, phrase. The longer and more grammatically complex the subject, noun, phrase portion of the sentence is, the more likely we are to misidentify the subject. Part of the reason for this is the way our brain processes linguistic information. Most of us can hold five to seven words verbatim in short-term memory. If the subject noun phrase portion of the sentence is longer than five to seven words, or even fewer words if the subject noun phrase is grammatically complicated, our brains automatically recode the noun phrase in a simplified form. Here's an example. A group of yachts with brightly colored banners flying in the wind were entering the harbor. This sentence contains a subject verb agreement error. The verb were agrees with yachts rather than with the actual subject group. In the research literature on grammatical errors, this type of mistake is so common that it has its own name, the nearest noun agreement error. When we recode a long and or complex subject noun phrase into a long-term memory, we tend to remember only the semantically strongest noun that is nearest the verb. In the case of the example sentence just given, the semantically strongest noun nearest the verb is yachts. Here is a psycholinguistic experiment that you can perform at home. Read the example sentence to someone. Then after a minute or so, ask the person what the sentence was about. The odds are very strong that the person will remember the sentence as being about yachts. Very few people will remember the sentence being about a group of yachts. There are a few subject agreement errors in short sentences because the subject and the verb are either side by side or close together. So one way to avoid subject verb agreement errors is to write like third graders with short subject noun phrases. 
However, because we want to write sentences with adult level complexity, we need to understand what it is about longer and or more complex subject noun phrases that makes them hard to monitor for subject verb agreement. Understanding the mechanisms for expanding the subject noun phrase is the key to gaining control of the nearest noun agreement error. Subject noun phrases and all other noun phrases for that matter can be expanded in two ways. The first way is relatively trivial. We can put additional adjectives in front of the subject noun. A much more important way of expanding the subject noun phrase is to add post noun modifiers. Basically, we make subject noun phrases longer and more complex by adding one or more of these three post noun modifiers, adjective prepositional phrases, adjective clauses, and participial phrases. Here are examples of all three types of post noun modifiers in italics applied to the basic sentence, birds sing. Adjective prepositional phrase, birds in the forest sing. Adjective clause, birds that are in the forest sing. Participial phrase, birds living in the forest sing. As you can see, the effect of each of these post noun modifiers is to push the subject noun birds apart from the verb sing. When multiple post-noun modifiers are combined, the subject noun and the verb end up at a considerable distance from each other. This is what happened in our original example sentence. The subject group is separated from the verb by two prepositional phrases and a participial phrase. A group of yachts with brightly colored banners flying in the wind. Consciously checking any sentence for subject verb agreement always begins with finding the verb and then locating the subject to see that they agree. To check for nearest noun type subject verb agreement errors, we need to jump backward from the verb to the actual subject, skipping over all the intervening post noun modifiers. Our natural tendency is to look at the first noun or pronoun on the left side of the verb for a possible match. This is a mistake. We do not want to cycle back through the sentence from right to left, checking each noun or pronoun as we go for possible subject verb agreement. Here is a helpful test for locating the subject when there is a long and or complex subject noun phrase. The lost subject test. Jump from the verb back to the first eligible noun in the clause or sentence, ignoring any nouns or pronouns in introductory phrases. Test that noun or pronoun for subject verb agreement. Here is the lost subject test applied to the preceding example sentence. A group of yachts with brightly colored banners flying in the wind were entering the harbor. Begin by locating the verb were. Next, jump back to the beginning of the sentence, ignoring all of the intervening nouns. The first eligible noun, also in this case, the first noun, is group. Unless something remarkable is going on in the sentence, this is going to be the actual subject. Test the verb with that first noun to see if there's a valid subject verb agreement. A group were entering the harbor. In this case, we can see that there is a subject verb agreement error, which we can then correct. A group was entering the harbor. The full corrected sentence reads as follow. A group of yachts with brightly colored banners flying in the wind was entering the harbor. Here's the lost subject test applied to a second example. The number of accidents caused by drunk drivers dramatically increase at night. The first step is to identify the verb in italics. The number of accidents caused by drunk drivers dramatically increase at night. The next step is to apply the lost subject test and jump to the first eligible noun or pronoun in the sentence, now also in italics. The number of accidents caused by drunk drivers dramatically increase at night. Next, check for subject verb agreement. The number increase at night. Clearly there is a subject verb agreement error that needs to be corrected. The number of accidents caused by drunk drivers dramatically increases at night. The lost subject test has one tricky bit. The test identifies the first eligible noun or pronoun in the clause. The reason for this qualification is that often sentences or clauses begin with introductory adverb prepositional phrases that contain nouns or pronouns. The nouns and pronouns in introductory adverb prepositional phrases are not eligible to enter into subject verb agreement. Here is an example of such a sentence. In our last three games, the average margin of our losses have been two points. The first noun in the sentence is games, the object of the preposition in. Nouns inside prepositional phrases are locked up inside the prepositional phrases and are therefore ineligible for subject verb agreement. Accordingly, when we apply the lost subject test, 
We ignore the ineligible noun games and look at the next noun. The average margin have been two points. We have now identified a subject verb agreement error, which we could correct as follows. In our last three games, the average margin of our losses has been two points. In actual practice, introductory adverb prepositional phrases are so easy to recognize that they pose little practical problem in using the loss subject test. One final point about the lost subject test, despite the fact of all of our examples so far have been sentences, the actual wording of the test is that it applies to causes as well as to sentences. The term clause is broader than the term sentence. Sentences are just one type of clause, an independent clause. The lost subject test works equally well for subject verb agreement and dependent clauses as for subject verb agreement and independent clauses. Here is an example of the lost subject test applied to a dependent clause. Harold told them that his cottage and one of the new seaside developments were not damaged in the storm. To apply the lost subject test, we must jump from the verb were to the first eligible noun or pronoun in its clause. Remember, clauses are like Gilligan's Island. You can't get off. The first eligible noun in its clause is cottage. His cottage were not damaged in the storm. Clearly, there is a subject verb agreement error, which we would correct as follows. His cottage was not damaged in the storm. The entire sentence would now read this way. Harold told them that his cottage in one of the new seaside developments was not damaged in the storm. Grammar trivia, disagreeable agreement. The term agreement attraction refers to an error that occurs when people use the wrong form of a word because they assume it grammatically agrees with the wrong word. In this example, the verb must be depends because it should agree with cost, not with groceries. The cost of groceries depend on the store. The verb is attracted to the wrong word because they are placed near each other and seem to make sense as a pair. Summary. The most common cause of subject verb errors when the verb agrees with the nearest semantically strong noun rather than with the more distant actual subject. Anytime you have a sentence or clause with a long or complicated subject noun phrase, it is probably worth your while to check for a lost subject error. Jump from the verb to the first noun in the sentence or clause. Pair that noun up with the verb to see if it makes sense as the subject. The odds are that it is the actual subject. If it does not make a valid subject, work your way across the subject noun phrase from left to right until you find the actual subject. It won't be far. The mysterious case of there is and there was. Nearly every language has a construction called an existential. Existential sentences are used for pointing out the existence of something. In English, existential sentences use the adverb there plus a linking verb usually a form of be. Here are some examples. There are plus leaking verbs in italics. Waiter, there's a fly in my soup. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. There seems to be a problem with my bill. Houston, there's a problem. The grammar of existential sentences is somewhat unusual in that the actual subject follows the verb. Here are the example sentences again this time with the verbs in italics and the subject nouns in bold. Waiter, there's a fly in my soup. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. There seems to be a problem with my bill. Houston, there's a problem. We can prove that the nouns following the verbs are actually subjects by making the nouns plural. When we do so, the verbs in italics must change to agree with the changed nouns in bold. Waiter, there are flies in my soup. There were some old women who lived in a shoe. There seemed to be some problems with my bill. Houston, there are some problems. One of the authors of this book and his students did a study of subject verb agreement errors found in the writing of college freshmen. Somewhat to our surprise, a substantial number of subject verb agreement errors involved existential sentences. Even more surprising, the errors fell into a distinct pattern. Following are two groups of subject verb errors involving existential sentences. The first group is representative of more than 98% of the errors we found. The second group is representative of a kind of error that made up less than 2% of the errors. Look at the two groups and see if you can figure out what the errors in each group have in common. 
Existential verbs in italics, subjects in bold. Group A. Almost all errors were like this. There is dozens of books piled on the carpet. There was some old dishes that looked usable. There seems to be noises coming from the backyard. There were still many jobs to be done. Group B. Errors like this were quite uncommon. There are a big lake on the other side of the mountain. There appeared to be no solution. There were a bright light shining in the trees. Do you see the pattern? The common error is using a singular verb with a plural subject. The uncommon error is the reverse, using a plural verb with a singular subject. Didn't you find the second group to be so odd as to seem almost un-English? Clearly, something is going on here. All things being equal, we would expect roughly as many errors with singular subjects as plural subjects. Some other factor must be intervening to cause the distribution of errors to be so skewed. Something makes it much more likely for us to make a subject verb agreement error in existential sentences when the subject is plural than when the subject is singular. The answer seems to be an English speaker's perception of how existential sentences are built. Apparently, people increasingly think of the existential there not as an adverb, but as the actual subject of the sentence. The existential there has become like the pronoun it, an invariant singular that requires a verb with the third person singular s. This analysis would explain why errors of plural subjects with singular verbs are so common and the reverse error of singular subjects with plural verbs are, is so rare. If there is perceived as a singular subject, then all verbs in existential sentences must also be singular to agree, regardless of the number of the noun following the verb. If this analysis is correct, then we have a conflict between what sounds right in casual, spoken English, what is technically correct and formal, written English. Maybe at some point in the future, existential there will be fully accepted as the grammatical subject of its sentence. But until that happy time, we need to monitor existential sentences for subject-verb agreement. What we have learned about existential there gives us a considerable advantage in knowing exactly what kind of error to look for. The existential there test. When a sentence contains an existential there, check the noun following the linking verb to see if it is plural. If it is, then make sure the verb agrees with it. Summary, existential sentences are so prone to subject verb error that you should monitor each one. Look at the noun following the existential verb to see if it is plural. If it is, check to make sure the verb is in agreement with that plural subject. Agreement with compound subjects. A compound subject is formed when two or more subjects are joined by a coordinating conjunction. The coordinating conjunctions normally used to join subjects are the following. Single word conjunctions, correlative conjunctions. Single word conjunctions and the correlative conjunctions, both and. Single word conjunctions or the correlative conjunctions, either, or, neither, nor. Following are examples of each, coordinating conjunctions in italics, compound subjects underlined. Larry and Holly are coming to the meeting. A pencil or a pen is all that you will need. Both Donner and Blitzen were really fed up with the fat guy. Either Fred or Lois is scheduled to be there. Unfortunately, neither I nor my husband is able to come. The rules for subject verb agreement with compound subjects are different depending on the coordinating conjunction used. For the coordinating conjunction and, and the correlative conjunction both, and, the compound subject requires a plural verb. One and the same. Occasionally, we will use a compound subject in which the two nouns refer to the same person or thing. In this situation, we use a singular verb. Here's an example. Compound underline verb in italics. My neighbor and good friend Sally has lived here for years. In this sentence, my neighbor and good friend Sally are one and the same person. Because there's only one person, the verb is singular. Here are two more examples. His pride and joy was a restored Stanley steamer. His son and heir is an accountant in Burbank. Each and every. When the modifier each or every is used to modify a compound subject, the verb is singular. Each and every seem to have an implicit 